This is a quick one today. We're going to start from my Vertex Earth project where we created a sphere and we put a bunch of points around it to create this, this beautiful Earth. Today we're going to add interactivity using the mouse. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Starting from a freshly downloaded repo, move the camera back just a smidge. I also want to rename this cube. It's not a cube at all. It's a globe. We're going to add a raycaster. We're going to use that raycaster to figure out where exactly the mouse is on the globe. Mouse move or pointer move listener, and then update the shader. That's it. And if we have time, we might mess around with a, uh, a variation on the shader. Let's create that raycaster first. Const raycaster is equal to a new 3.raycaster. We're going to need a couple of vectors, one to track the pointer position and one to track the point on the globe, the, the UV point. Let's go ahead and wire up that mouse listener right now, or pointer listener, if you will, and you will. Window.add event listener, mouse move. We're going to get the normalized device coordinates. The client X is the position in the window in pixels. We divide it by the total width to get a fractional value between zero and one. And then we multiply that by two. So now it's between zero and two and we subtract one. Now it's between negative one and one. That's what the GPU likes, those coordinates. That's what's happening here. I want to update, I want to do the actual raycasting now. Handle raycast function handle raycast set from camera that vec2 that we just defined. Go ahead and grab all the intersection objects in this array. There's only one object, it's the globe, because that's all I care about. It's not recursive, false. And then copy into the globe UV vec2 that UV. Like so, save it, make sure it doesn't blow up. Didn't blow up. Now, we need to pass that UV position into the shader so that the shader can use it. To do that, we're going to create a new uniform called mouse UV. We can call it pointer UV, whatever. It's a type V2, and it's just an empty VEC2 right now. And inside this handle raycast method, I'm going to go ahead and say uniforms.mouseUV.value equals globe UV. Thank you. Let's update the vertex shader with our new uniform. Looks like this uniform vec2 mouse uv save it make sure it doesn't blow up super down here under where we're setting the z position based on the elevation texture let's add add some lines of code here first thing i'm going to do is get the distance of the current point to the mouse uv and that looks like this float dist is equal to distance mouse uv and the current uv I'm going to create an empty float called Z disp, like Z displacement, and it's just going to be zero. Wait, what did you say there? I wonder what that looks like. Well, I, <laughs> I want to see what that looks like first. And we'll just set that mouse position again. Let's, see, let's or not mouse, but the point position. That doesn't look good at all. The whole globe just sort of undulates. That's what I thought. So I don't want this. Thank you very much. And instead, I'm going to use an if statement inside my shader. If the, z the distance is less than a value, let's call it 0 0.05, then set this z displacement. I actually want it to be this value minus that times some multiple. We'll start with 1.0 and see how that looks. I need a close curly brace and then just use that value. Let's see how that looks. Not very remarkable. Let's increase this multiple here, and that should make it more noticeable. Look at that. How cool is that? That's it, essentially, but there's a, a little bit of extra fun we can do. If we use an additional texture that's included in the project, I think it's called Earth Map 1K, and we'll call this Color Map, and we'll call this one uh, Other Map, like that. Let's add, let's add it to our uniforms. This other 
map or other texture. Whoops. And we're passing this another texture into our shader and we're going to use it in the fragment shader. Whoops, did I break it? I'm so sorry I broke it. Am I sorry? We'll see. Oh, can't find earth map 1k. So I just corrected the name of the earth map. All right. So now we're using this instead. This um, color now just looks like a globe, right? I'm wondering if I want to uh, play around with modifying the look of this thing too. I probably don't want to do this, but I'm doing it anyway. Give it a blue wireframe. Yeah, that's way too bright. But if I said um, transparent is true and opacity is 0 0.5, how's that look? It's still too bright. Yeah, that's fine. Let's give this guy a lot more subdivisions so that the water... It, it has, I want to give the effect that there's kind of water there. Let's drop down the opacity now. Okay, that's looking pretty good to me. In fact, it's too many. Too many subdivisions. Yeah, I like that. Anyway, back to the shader. We're passing in another texture, that rainbow texture, and we're going to use that. Uh, where are we going to use it? Over here in the fragment shader. Let's go ahead and add that. A uniform sampler 2D other texture. Got it. Now that's in there, and if we want to just see that we're using it, eh, we don't need to see that we're using it. We just saw it a moment ago. Okay, now we're going to take this distance value that we calculated and pass it over to the, the fragment shader. The way to do that is using a varying. Varying. Uh, it's a float v distance. And then we'll just say, oh, v distance? It's distance. No problem. Now we need to define it in the fragment shader, which is its own separate program, varying float v dist. Yes. I should spell float, right? And see if I blew it up yet. Nope, didn't blow it up. And what I want to do is use the rainbow map whenever I'm on that area that I'm mousing. It can look like this here. If dist v dist is less than zero point that threshold, then use that color like that. And let's see what that looks like. All right, pretty cool, right? Now wherever I mouse, I'm using that other texture. I think we can do slightly better because it's kind of a harsh uh, border. You know, it's either it's either one texture or another. What if we were to blend between the two instead? So let's do that. I'm going to define this as a vec three other, and that's that other texture. And then I'll say, okay, if the distance is less than the threshold, then color equals mix. And then I'll pass in color and other and some value. If it's 0 0.5, it's going to look like this. Kind of like halfway between the two. Yuck, not at all what I wanted. Instead, I'll say that threshold, 0 0.05. I could, I could separate that out into its own variable, minus vdist times some value. This multiple will just make the effect more noticeable. Let's see how that looks. Okay, that's pretty good. And we're getting a nice transition between the two, but I want this to be more pronounced. So I'm multiple, I'm increasing that. And that's the effect I'm looking for. When you mouse over, it gets really, like really noticeable. If we were to break this value out into its own variable, like thresh, for example, I like thresh instead of threshold because it's because I can. Um, it's a float thresh equals that. Now I can easily set that to something smaller like four. I like that. It's still too big up here. Let's borrow this and give it to this guy here. And now thresh can go here and here like that. Yeah, that's it. Thank
thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one.